Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the Whirlpool washer drain hose assembly. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at ApplianceParsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new drain hose assembly. The drain hose assembly is what carries the wastewater out of the washing machine. The main reason to be changing it out is if it has a hole in it and you're getting water leaking on the floor. In order to get to the part, we have to open up the console. Our style has a Phillips screw right back here where we can just take it out on each side. There's another style that has a trim piece right here that you have to pop off and the screws are located in the front underneath. And then the last style has a little clip under each side that you have to get underneath with a putty knife and pop it off. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take the screws out. Once you get the screw all the way out, it doesn't come out, it just stays there. But you know you have it far enough out when you can push it forward and unlock the tabs. Once you have this screw out, we can go do the other one. To lift the console up, you want to push it towards the front of the washer and swing it up over the back and let it rest. Now that we have the console out of the way, we can remove the clips that hold the cabinet to the back wall. All you have to do is stick a flathead screwdriver onto the clip and flex it and pull it off the cabinet. Once you have both clips removed, we can take the wiring harness off the lid switch. It's just held in by a little tab. You can lift up on it with a flathead screwdriver and pull the wiring harness off. With the lid switch disconnected, we can take the cabinet off the frame. We're going to lift up on the lid and grab it right here and tilt the whole body back to about a 45 degree angle and then lift it off the frame. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. Now that we have the cabinet off, we have access to the drain hose. It comes off the bottom pump fitting and goes up to the back wall. We're going to put a towel down just in case any water is still on the hose. Once you have the towel down, we can grab a pliers and move this clamp up the hose so we can pull it off the pump. Whenever you're working on an appliance, it's always best to check everything out as you're taking it apart. In this case, we notice some white residue at the bottom of the pump, which if you've noticed any water dripping on the floor in front of the washer, would indicate that the seal on the pump has gone bad, and you should probably check it out and change it if it needs to be changed. As you follow the drain hose back, there's a clip that holds it to the frame. You want to go on the back side of it and compress the little locking tabs. We'll do the upper one first. And all you have to do is compress it on the back and pull it out. And then do the same for the bottom one. Don't worry if you break it. It comes with a new one on the new drain hose anyways. Once you have the drain hose off, we can follow it up to the back wall and take the fitting off. To take the fitting off the back wall, we're going to grab a needle on those pliers and pinch the locking tabs. We'll do the lower one first. Once you have it compressed, you can push on it. And once you have it started, we can release the upper one. Once you have both locking tabs through, then you can pull a little bit to the other side to release these tabs. And then we can pull the fitting off the hole and pull the drain hose through the opening. Once you have the drain hose off, you can pull it off the washing machine. Here's the old drain hose assembly next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. The new hose doesn't come with a clamp for the pump end, so we have to swap it over. So we're going to grab our pliers and put it onto the new one.
Once you have the clamp installed on the new drain hose, we can put it into the washer. To put the new drain hose assembly in, we're going to feed it through the back wall just like we took it out. And we have to snap the fitting in. So we're going to put the back wall of the cabinet right in between these slots. And once you have them lined up, you can push it in. And then we can rotate it over and snap in the clips on the other side. Once you have the fitting snapped into place, we can follow the drain hose down and clip the fitting in to hold it to the frame. All you have to do is push into the same hole we took it out of and it'll lock in. Once you have the fitting snapped into the frame, we can put the end of the drain hose onto the water pump. You wanna make sure it goes all the way down and bottoms out on that tab. Once you have it on all the way, we can grab the pliers and move the clamp up. Once you have the clamp moved up into position so you get a good seal, we can put the washer back together. To put the cabinet back on, you want to lift it up the same way you carried it off and carefully line the lip of the cabinet underneath the lip of the frame. Once you have that in place, you can lower it down resting on the tabs on each side. And once you have it down all the way, you want to make sure that these plastic strips are properly in the cabinet before we put the clips on. To put the cabinet retaining clips on, you just want to line it up with the hole in the back of the cabinet and then push it down and snap it into place. Now that we have both retaining clips in, we can reattach the lid switch wiring harness. All you have to do is line it up and lock it into place. There's a locking tab on the top. You want to make sure you push it all the way in so you get a good connection. Now that we have the lid switch connected, we can rotate the console over and make sure the tabs go into the cabinet. Once you have them in, you can pull it back and lock it in place. And then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to tighten down the screws. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by appliancepartspros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.